Review, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix for Xbox 360. The past week, I rented I Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix for Xbox 360, I and I just finished the main plot. Um, this is the first Harry Potter game to be made for the Xbox 360 and the PS3, and is based on the fifth book, and it's time to coincide with the release of the movie of the same name. Electronic Arts developed this game Any for the PS2, Xbox 360, PS3, no, Wii, Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance, PSP, and PC CD-ROM. Meaning, um, computer, but I, I think they're actually going to make a Mac version too. And, of course, they pretty much have a license to print money since they have the exclusive rights to make Harry Potter games just as long as they make a halfway decent game. And, luckily for us, they did make a decent game. Uh, this game is sort of an interactive story adventure game like Maniac Mansion and King's Quest rather than the 3D platform games that the first three games were based on. Uh, this game consists of Harry walking around and talking to characters and performing spells and tasks in order to advance the plot. I jokingly considered calling this review Harry Potter and the order of random tasks needed to, be, needed to advance the plot. Tasks and locations are pro uh, plotted out on the magical Marauder's map and magic footprints will appear on the floor to guide you to the next destination uh, once you're designated on the map. This keeps you from getting lost and is very tuned in the overall flavor of the game. Now, the graphics are a real treat. The level of details that the small army of digital artists at Electronic Arts must have spent in developing the next generative next generation interactive digital set for Hogwarts is really impressive. Um, we can look forward to them using it again on the game based on the fifth and uh, on the sixth and seventh book. The characters are all based on the actors from the movie but only a hand few of the original actors can, uh, contributed their voices for the game. The overall cast of Hogwarts is impressive and uh, the, or, I mean, the overall castle of Har Hogwarts is very impressive and is very immersive feeling to it. Hi. You can walk from one end of, end of the castle to the other without there being a noticeable loading screen. Um, but it's good because it's it's done so well and taken care of because it's about 90% of the time spent playing the game is Harry running from one place to the next. Uh, the audio is also very immersive with characters talking as you pass and there's a good amount of dialogue in the game including the uh, Slytherin that talks smack about your uh, lack of Quidditch skills. Casting spells is done by tapping out a pattern of movement with a right analog stick and I could really see it being a lot of fun on the Nintendo Wii. There's a Penny Arcade comic today about um, play playing this game on the Wii. And there's a really cool physics engine, and picking up objects with magic and swinging them around the, the environments is a lot of fun. You can actually like pick up tables and hit people with them and uh, in, in, in air. Unfortunately, the sport of Quidditch is completely lacking for this game. It's a real pity since Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup for GameCube is a secret guilty pleasure of mine, and it would have been really awesome to see in high definition on the 360. Now, there's a number of mini-games such as Gobstones, Exploding Snaps, and Wizard's Chess. And just walking around and interacting things, you find experience points that are used to unlock behind-the-scenes content in a secret room, room of rewards haunted by Moaning Myrtle. And they even got the same semi-weird girl to uh, the actress to play Morning Myrtle. The overall level of dis difficulty was pretty easy and it's almost impossible to fail at any given task at hand. Um, I almost feel guilty about racking up a bunch of the Xbox achievements while playing this and you sort of have to keep repeating it over and over until you get it right but kids of any age should have no problem playing through the game. Uh, there's almost no fast-paced action of any kind in the game. I mean, there, there's a couple of wizards duels, but if you keep casting the same basic magic spells over and over again, they go pretty quick. Uh, there's not much of a re replay value for a jaded gamer such as me, but it still was a bunch of fun. Um, most games based on licensed movies and cartoons are absolutely hideous and unplayable, really but EA had a good amount of respect for the original source subject 
and they made a very good game that would be perfect for any serious Harry Potter fan of any age.